will buy season tickets to football teams and they will go every single weekend to watch these football games. Every single weekend. They will wear t-shirts, hats, scarves with those football players on their football games. They will chant. They will sit at home and watch on TV. They will search up the players and the formations of which players are playing and which are being transferred and which are being sold for certain amounts. They will be so obsessed with these football games. And that's kind of seen as completely normal. You know, the kind of like, oh, don't bother dad, he's watching his football on a Sunday. You know, and that it's so accepted that men are so, so into these like, sports games. Women in Taylor Swift, they want to go to a few concerts. All of a sudden, they're crazy and obsessed because they like Taylor Swift. When men are obsessed with things, it's just, oh, he's really passionate. When women are obsessed with things, it's kind of like insane and crazy. The Grinch would never do that. Hey, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Amani Forrester, author of the book, 30 Reasons Why Men Deserve Nothing. This book was written to warn women about red flags, the dangers of settling, going 50-50, and building up a man. It helps to deprogram you from the marrying for love narratives that we were all taught as children, and it features plenty of real life studies and data that can actually be fact-checked. Link is in the description. And if you'd like another way to support our work on this channel, you can always buy me a coffee, Links will be in the description box below for that as well. Now, a few days ago, I came across a very interesting discussion on Reddit. The title was, What was the first red flag you ignored in your worst relationship? And the number one answer, with over 3,700 likes, was this one. Dismissive comments about my interests seemed minor until they became a pattern. Other women began to chime in, and one commenter said, Yes, this one. I wore dresses a lot, and I liked the color pink. I was always told that it was too girly, even though I'm a girl. I was meant to think badly about liking this color. I started dating a high school best friend, and he told me I don't like cute things, while also telling me how cute he thought I was and how he liked bending down to kiss me. It was confusing. He didn't like girls who wore dresses or hyper-feminine, which I am both. He didn't like being romantic and made fun of me when I kept flowers he gifted me. Being dismissive or even ridiculing things is such a huge red flag. Another person said, If he didn't like feminine girls, why would he go and date one? Did you ever get the chance to ask him that? And then someone else answered, He liked aspects of her personality so much that he built up an idealized version of it in his head and thought he could whittle away at the aspects that he didn't like without realizing that doing that means you never really liked the person for who they were in the first place. Classic. And then this commenter said, My brother said something so similar to this after his breakup. Something along the lines of, I loved her, but everything needed to change. Like, what attracted you to her then? Shake my head. And yet another person said, I just broke up with someone who would belittle my hobbies and interests at any given opportunity. I'm sorry, and I hope you find someone who appreciates you. And someone else said, fellow member of the condescending X club. So it's a thing. This is a thing. And then I'm going to read just two more comments. So one person says this exactly. About two weeks into the relationship, he spent 30 minutes telling me how shitty and absolute garbage he thought my favorite band was. I got upset and he said, well... I'm not making fun of you, just that shit band. He then proceeded to mock me for literally everything I liked and did for the next two years. My taste in music, my favorite shows, my hobbies, what I like to eat, what I read, what I wore, my friends, my family. He once literally turned me picking a bagel for breakfast into a screaming match about how I only eat gross shit and how I do it on purpose to upset him. I had no idea he didn't like bagels. It turns out that it was never about the bagel or the music. He was just a controlling and abusive nightmare and was taking his bad day out on me. I left him after he physically assaulted me. I wish my self-esteem had been good enough for me to get out of there sooner. I still have CPTSD over it all. Final comment, this person says, And of course their hobbies are so much more important than yours. I hate that so much. Used to be with a guy who liked, quote, educational pastimes, like learning new languages and playing instruments and stuff like that. So of course me wanting to read comics and take hip-hop dance classes for fun was obviously just absurd and beneath him. This discussion was incredibly eye-opening for me. It made me realize how many women and girls who date males will share their experiences of being with a partner who either shows no interest in their hobbies, dismisses their hobbies as not being real, or makes fun of them altogether. 
But because this reaction to women's interests is so normalized, most women don't even recognize that constantly having your passions invalidated or ridiculed is actually a form of abuse. In fact, there's a YouTuber who I really enjoyed watching a few years ago. She's a talented crafter of handmade jewelry and accessories, and she'll often paint them while speaking in her videos. Tell me why she recently returned to YouTube and explained that one of the major reasons for her two-year absence was because she was dealing with an abusive, now ex-partner, who never showed any interest in her art, nor gave her any validation. She said his opinion would have meant so much to her when they were together, and when she actually brought this up to him, his response was that she had so many online fans that complimented her, so that's why he figured he didn't need to say anything. Yeah, it's, it's just giving like jealous and insecure. But anyway, this topic made me want to go out and try to find videos of people speaking about it. But unfortunately, I didn't find many because again, I don't believe most women recognize this subtle form of abuse for what it is. But I will share what I did find and I hope you get the message. Make sure to like and subscribe and now let's get into it. Never trust a guy who hates astrology and cats because he probably hates women too. Now, hear me out. Because if he hates astrology, you know, this female-dominated sphere, he will probably immediately judge a woman for having an interest in anything. And you know, this isn't really new because teenage boys and men can obsess over video games and sports and no one really has a problem with it. But once something is popularized by women, it's written off as stupid. And astrology is centered around self-reflection and introspection, and toxic masculinity views that as a bad thing, so he probably has issues with vulnerability. And if he goes on about how he hates cats, he probably has issues with consent because, you know, you have to earn a cat's trust and cats kind of just like do whatever they want. So if he lacks the emotional capacity to love something that he can't control, I think that says something. This is things that I didn't realize were abusive until I was out of the relationship, part nine. I dated this guy who would constantly criticize or belittle any of my hobbies or things that I was interested in. For example, I decided at one point in the relationship that I wanted to start an Instagram account where I was like a food blogger, like I wanted to share my food. And if you were to look now, it's, it's been quite successful. But back when I started, my ex would belittle this so much. Any creator knows it is not easy to start a new account on a new platform and I put a lot of work into it, okay? I put in a lot of effort into this and it paid off. But when I was first starting out, my ex would be like, why are you wasting your time on this? Like, this is not going to be successful. Like, what's the point? Like, you're wasting your time. And fast forward a few years later when I'm actually successful and now making money and getting brand deals... He then discredits my hard work and all the time and effort I put into it and is like basically just saying that I don't deserve the money that I'm getting, but also felt entitled to the money that I was getting. If I ever expressed interest in a TV show or a movie, nine times out of 10, he wouldn't even give it a chance, look it up, like anything to do with what it was about. He would just say, mm, no, that doesn't sound like a good show. But like if his coworkers or his friends said that it was a good show, he'd give it a shot. At one point, I decided I wanted to be a runner. I got into super good shape. I started running, like I was running all the time. I was training for races and he would get annoyed at that. He would be like, you have to go for a run again? Like why, you just went for a run the other day. Like you don't need to be running all the time. This is when I'm like training for a half marathon, which by the way, I came in third place. But like anything that was important to me was just somehow not worthy of any time or effort being put into it. But his hobbies and interests, well, I never heard the end of them because that's all he would talk about. But my hobbies and interests, well, those were just like, who cares about those? All of my exes didn't really care at all about any of my hobbies. This post, it just broke my heart and it resonates with me so much. So let me share with you guys a story time. So my ex was an entrepreneur. He ran his own business and did so quite successfully a few years into our relationship um it became quite apparent that he would become the breadwinner of the family because he had more earning potential than i did at our regular jobs but my regular jobs were paying for health benefits and had other contributing factors that were important this became quite problematic for him he did not like the idea that somehow i was earning less and he consistently tried to bring up the fact that 
people will pay you to do anything, so just pick something. So one Christmas season, I found myself um, unemployed and I had decided to try to sell some Christmas cookies and cakes because I am quite the avid baker and quite a good baker. And sure enough, it worked. Um, that Christmas, my first Christmas, I think I baked over like 1500 sugar cookies and decorated them all like on my own. Um, and it was amazing. And I discovered at that point that I really enjoyed running a bakery. So a custom order bakery. So that's what I did. I am not very business savvy. He was, so I would ask for his advice. I would listen to what it was he would have to say. He set me up with spreadsheets that showed like, you know, uh, expenses versus, you know, actual, you know, profits and things like that. And I filled it out. I did it all the time. When we moved into the new community that we had moved into, I had kind of started marketing myself as the bakery and I kind of got, I got pretty busy. Um, it got to the point that I was baking almost 3000 sugar cookies at Christmas, like 1200 gingerbreads and like eight or 900 shortbreads. And then after that there was cakes, um, like almost every weekend of the year, like one or two cakes every weekend of the year. It was amazing and I was so thankful, but it was never enough for him. And it was never going to be enough for him because if I succeeded, there was always a problem. If I wasn't baking enough, that was a problem. And so when we separated, I decided to close down the business just because I didn't know what my life was going to be like. And it didn't feel right taking kids birthday cakes orders and being like, I don't know if I'll be able to do your kids birthday cake in a month. But shutting down that business was the hardest thing. But looking back, I'm struggling now going back to baking because as much as I love it, there's a lot of negative connotation now into it because I realized that no matter how hard I worked at that business and no matter how much I did to try to make that succeed and make it better for us, it simply was never going to be enough. And that's really tough. So when your partners don't care about your interests, it's so I've had this long standing theory that people who hate cats, like really, really hate cats are actually just bad people in general. And I found some evidence online that confirms this theory. It was on Reddit. I was on the cats subreddit because I love pictures of cute cats. And somebody posted about the rise of cat hate subreddits, which I didn't even know were a thing. Um, and they are a thing. There's all these little subreddits with like a couple hundred users each dedicated to posting about how much these people hate cats, like hate them. And it's very not normal. Like I went to one of them and the hate that people have for these innocent animals is like literally insane. A lot of these people are posting about like how much they hate their partner's cats. A lot of them are like talking about how much they hate their girlfriend's cat and like asking like, how do we get rid of this cat? How do I get rid of this cat? Like what is wrong with these people? I was also curious to see these people's post history. I was shocked to find that at least half of these people are posting flagrantly misogynistic, racist, homophobic, transphobic, like everything phobic rhetoric elsewhere on Reddit and their entire personalities are dedicated to hatred. I am taking that information. I'm sitting with that information. And just remember if somebody tells you that they hate cats and like they make that their whole personality, they are a bad person. Like some of these people should probably be on a list and maybe already are. The reason he acts like he hates everything about you is because he hates everything about you. He hates that you're fun. He hates that you're positive. He hates that people gravitate towards you. He hates that you're not jealous and spiteful and sneaky. He hates that you can have any man you want. So if it feels like he hates you, he hates you. Repeat after me, if he doesn't support you, he doesn't deserve you. Not only when it comes to bills and stuff, but your hobbies, your passions, your interests, that side business you want to start, whatever it is, he needs to be your number one fan. Because how often is it that women are always the number one fan of their men? But why don't we expect the same energy back? Remember that you're the main character of your life, never a side character to a man. Honestly, I think a lot of males dislike women's interests and put them down as a form of, quote, humbling. They're often jealous and insecure about their partner's achievements, so it makes them feel better to pretend their partner's passions and hobbies are no big deal. 
A lot of boyfriends and husbands are covert haters, and honestly, they're the ops, who don't actually enjoy watching their partners achieve their dreams or have fun. Remember that marathon runner who was leading a race, and just as she was approaching the finish line, her husband rushes out onto the track with their children, trying to make her take their kids? Then he had the audacity to look shocked and confused when she didn't stop and allow him to distract her, and instead she crossed the finish line? Like, yeah. <laughs> Insecure and frankly selfish males don't care about anything that brings women joy or fulfillment if it isn't somehow tied to serving them. It's part of the entitlement that the patriarchy fosters in them, and it's a symptom of their main character syndrome. Every interest or hobby of yours has them thinking, what's in it for me? I believe these are the same males capable of harming women's pets or destroying their plants. I believe these are the same males who hate things like astrology, crystals, art, makeup, and shopping. Why? Because your attention's not on them and they're not receiving any benefit from what you're engaging in. When a woman engages in hobbies, a secure partner is able to decenter themselves and center her. They cheer on their wife or girlfriend and they admire her for her knowledge and skills. Insecure males can't do this because it's a major blow to their fragile ego and it shatters their belief that males are inherently better than women at everything, and also everything women do should be to impress and serve them. So yeah, just a short PSA that any partner who actively and consistently doesn't support your hobbies and interests probably doesn't like you either, and things are probably going to get worse. I'm not saying dump them if you don't want to. He's a loser, Marge. Dump him! But at least be wary that this was the biggest red flag for a lot of other women who went on to have terrible relationships with males. What are your thoughts on this topic? Join in in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.